Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. If you're looking for PTCGO codes, including the new Sword and Shield stuff, make sure you go ahead and check out the Town store. You can also use that code Omnipoke for an extra 5% discount on your orders. For today's video, we are revisiting Frostmoth. Now, there is a Lapras build on the channel already. That was pre-PTCGO though, so we haven't really got to see Ice Dance in action. This time we're looking at a more two prizer based list that has a bit more sort of tech options, I guess you could say. A bit more flexibility um, because we are trying to be more sort of ice dance boxy, I guess. Frost box, I guess I'll call it. Um, similar to how we've seen like welder box work uh, where you just try and shove the best attackers possible into one deck and have them come out of the deck in the right situations to attack with basically. Trying to take advantage of this awesome Ice Dance ability with Frostmoth and get lots of burst damage and all sorts of different threatening GX attacks um, out of nowhere, basically. That is the idea. So let's run down the list, starting off with the Frostmoth, I guess. I'm playing a 3-3 line of Frostmoth. Now, there is some debate if you want to play a fourth Snom uh, because you probably still want to go first with this deck because we are evolution-based. Uh, your deck doesn't get going until this Ice Dance comes into play, but as soon as you do... You get to attach as many water energy cards as you like during a turn to your benched water Pokemon. So you just go ahead and flood the board of energies. Whenever you see them, you just shove it onto whatever attacker you're looking for at the time. And it means that we can make some of these three, four, five, six, seven, eight energy attack costs that we have in here uh, actually work, which is really cool. So yeah, Frostmoth, an insane ability. Probably going to get better next set when we get the water bucket. Um, but for now, we're just going to try and draw into our water energies and make the most out of this ability because it really is pretty cool. From there, we have a bunch of water attackers. We have uh, the one prizer in Volk Prism. It has 160 hit points as a basic, which is crazy. Jet Geyser can be some nice pseudo gusting for us. It can move dolls out the way. It can move Obstagoon out the way. It can move things with Lucky Egg out the way. It's a really, really nice card. It can just force things active into the in those early turns as well. So. That's always pretty decent. It also has some nice discard synergy of water energies because we do play a high count of energy retrievals. So it makes them live early on in the game. So that gust is one of the core reasons why he's in here. But Sauna Blast isn't the worst attack either. For three waters, you do 120 to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. We do try and sometimes go for big Magikarp Werelord spread damage GX attacks. So doing that 20 damage onto things can put um, certain Pokemon in range. Things like Orangaroo, for example, from the new set. Um, and some other basic Pokemon uh, like Baby Blown and stuff like that. So yeah, it's actually uh, pretty decent doing that 20 spread. Even if you're not going for the big Werelord spread later on, it can mean sometimes one less energy required for things like Keldeo V to take knockouts on some higher hit point things. Also that 20 damage can set up a Keldeo GX Resolute Blade to knock out tag teams. So the 20 damage spread is actually super, super good. So yeah, Volk Prism, just a crazy good water card in general. From there, we do have two copies of that new Keldeo V. It's basically a mini version of Lapras. That Secret Sword does 50 and 30 more for each water energy attached to this guy. So the base damage with the three uh, to attack with is 140. And then you try and stack it up higher and higher and higher to hopefully one-shot things like Zacians at the very least. It's a lot of work to get through a tag team in one hit, but it can be done. Especially late game, if you still have a few energy retrievals left, you can just go for like a big burst knockout. If you go for like a Dedene plus a Professor's Research and all that good stuff. So hopefully that's what we look for. Uh, in general, it's a decent like two-shot style card uh, in those early turns for just decent pressure. We do still play one copy of Keldeo GX. That pure heart ability is super annoying for Mewtwo players. A decent number of them have cut Greninja GX from the 60. Um because you're not worried about Keldeo so much, but we're still playing it. Uh, and also the uh, Malamar-based Mewtwo doesn't have many answers to this unless they play NDDV. Uh, that's really the only thing they can use to get through us, but that's also like an easy to knock out two prizer for us at least. So there are benefits to that anyway. So Keldeo GX forcing answers from specifically Mewtwo players is the reason why he's in here. Also, you know, Sonic Edge isn't the worst for early pressure. Resolute Blade is a decent uh, GX attack that we have available. Obviously, being able to cap at uh, 250 uh, for 3 energy, that is pretty efficient, to be fair. Um, so, if you can try and combine it with that Volk Prism attack, you can maybe knock out some tag teams. So, something to bear in mind. This is still an annoying card for certain decks out there right now. We are playing one tag team. It's the Magikarp Werelord GX. 
300 hit points is pretty big. It's a good sponge, and it has Super Splash that can do 180 for 5. Not super efficient, but normally the Magikarp Wellord sticks around for at least a turn, so you can try and do it a couple of times. And then we have the big Wombo Combo of Towering Splash, doing 10 damage for 1 water. But if you have 7 more, <laughs> you get to do 100 to each of your opponent's bench, and that's what we look to do. It's really good against Malamar players, it's really good against a bunch of non-GX decks, and let's face it, plenty of decks out there right now are playing things like Jirachi and Oranguru and Absol, just sat on their bench that you can try and splash onto and take some easy prizes. So yeah, this Wellord is still a super good card. Yes, Mew's in the format, um, but hopefully it doesn't come into play in some decks. Like, for example, Malamar Mewtwo doesn't have space to play it. Uh, things like Rom don't often play it unless they're worried about Mirror, so you can get away with it in some matchups for sure. We then have this Palkia GX. Uh, it has Hydro Pressure, which does 60 and 20 more for each water. Um, so it's basically an even worse version of the Keldeo V. But its GX attack is really cool. Uh, you do 150 for 3 water, 2 colorless. And you also force your opponent to shuffle all energy from each of their Pokemon into their deck. It's a huge tempo swing. We're dealing a d decent chunk of damage into something. But also we're removing all of their hard work. Think about... So like a peak Ronda that's just used a full blitz, you can put like six energies back into their deck um, against things like ADP as well. Same thing. Uh, if they've just used Ultimate Ray, shove them all back into the deck. If they've spent their sources early, like pre Magnolia and stuff like that, you can just force them all back into the deck and make the opponent go ahead and find lots more combo pieces to get back into the game. This can be backbreaking for certain decks. Honestly, this Zero Vanish can completely change the complexion of games. And you do try and go for it in a decent number of matchups, so it's certainly something to bear in mind. Now that's all the water stuff out of the way, we do have a few just consistency boosters, really. We have a Ranguru, which can help protect things like Pokemon Catcher, Energy Retrieval, or any of these attackers that we don't want to use early on in the game. Save them for later, so that's always nice. We normally have board space with this deck. You normally just have like one attacker with a bunch of waters in the active, maybe one on the bench with like a few waters or ready to take uh, like the retrievals and then start dancing onto that guy. And then you just have like a Moth, a Jirachi, a Dene, and an Oranguru. So you have the space, you can protect some of these bigger cards, which is certainly very good for you. Two copies of the Dene GX. Hopefully, this Dene change can get us into. A bunch of waters, essentially the early turn is find Snom, turn it into a Frost Moth, then just find waters and start splashing. That's the idea. So uh, yeah, Dedene helps us dig, which is really nice. And then we have three copies of Jirachi. Obviously Frost, uh, Frost, Frost Moth's Ice Dance, I completely crossed my words there. Um, it only works on benched water Pokemon, so having a Jirachi in the active is never a bad thing because you get to ex get extra Stellar Wish value. You get to dig deeper into the deck to find these retrievals, find these ball search cards in the opening turns, find switches if you're using like a Keldeo V and then you have to like switch back to the bench to stack it up even more and then come back into the active for Secret Sword. These are all the reasons why we have the Jirachi. And in general, when we want to go first with the deck, having more Jirachis, more Dedenes in the list is never a bad idea to be a little bit more consistent to get things rolling in the first place because we are at the end of the day a setup based deck. Onto the trainers now, I'm playing two Pokemon Catcher. Now I hate playing coin flips. <laughs> I don't like doing it at all. It makes me nauseous. Um, but we don't really have much better Gust. Uh, we already have Volk for some pseudo gusting. Um, but this is versatile. It can get V Pokemon out of the act, out, uh, like off the bench and stuff like that. So if you want to just play two great catchers, you can certainly do that. But at the moment, we're flipping some coins. It's a video after all. Onto the uh, rest of the items, we have the three switches, obviously works with the Jirachi, we also have those two escape boards, and then we have uh, the ball search of quicks and comms, maximizing these so we can have decent outs to our Frostmoth line, and four copies of energy retrieval, this is a huge card to make sure that we have good burst reload once we've stacked a bunch of energies onto our initial like Keldeo, or if we've used the Palkia GX attack or something like that, it goes down. You're looking for energy retrievals. That's all you're really digging for. And hopefully with like a turn of Professor's Research to Dene and Stellar Wish, you're going to find a bunch of them and get a bunch of energies back into play. That's the idea. We play two copies of Viridian Forest. Now, there was a point where I just played more water energies, to be honest. Um, but when you are going for things like Zero Vanish, it's actually really important to have a Stadium Bounce for um, Thunder Mountain, for one thing, which is a really big deal, I think, because Picrom isn't naturally an easy matchup for you, I don't think. Even with the Zero Vanish, it can still be losable. Um, so you probably need to Zero Vanish and put the Stadium into play as well uh, to make it like a little bit more uh, winnable, I would say. 
Um, so that's the main reason why I have Viridian for exactly the Picaron matchup. But in general, um, it's just a deck thinning card that gets us more access to water energies, that is a stadium bounce to certain things. Um, so yeah, it's not like a bad card at all. Um, but there was a point where I just played physically more water energies, so something to bear in mind. It's in here specifically for the Picaron matchup, in my opinion. Uh, we then have four Marnie and four Professor's Research, obviously giving us good dig potential, Marnie being some disruption. We don't really have space for reset stamps because um, we are so focused on just finding a bunch of water energies. Let's just try and have an element of disruption but still dig the entire time. That's the idea and Marnie can provide that fantastically well. And research is just a big dump and draw which is what we're all about for getting a bunch of waters going. And yeah, just 13 waters to round out the 60. Um, that's all we're looking for really. For Pokemon, now I know I've said earlier that Lapras um, isn't the best. Um, well, it forces a lot out of you, really. You're, you're more of a combo deck, but something like having a 1-1 line of the Lapras may not be a bad deal because G-Max Pump is still just a better version of the Keldeo, and this can be like a last stand style attacker where you just have that 1-1 line of Lapras V-Max, and then you make a big Lapras and it just carries you. Sometimes that can be the case. And if you're just playing a 1-1 line, you're less worried about like the Picaron matchup because we still have these other attackers available. Um, to still like see you through the rest of the game. So I could certainly see uh, a thin Lapras line working in the list. For supporters, there are a few things you think about. There's uh, the combination of Lady, and for, there we go, Lady, as well as uh, Fisherman. You could think about both of these. Um, I'm not playing Fisherman right now, but I have done in previous renditions of the list, um, just because, you know, it's a supporter that gets you basically 120 damage uh, with Keldeo, or it gets you like really close towards some of these other attacks. Obviously, you're not digging with the Fisherman, but you do get guaranteed waters, and sometimes just guaranteeing water energy is really, really valuable. So I could see one of those two going into the list. There's also the other option of Misty and Lorelei. You only get three energies from this compared to the Lady, which is four, but you do have that option of getting an extra GX attack off. Now, it's rare that you will have the option to discard six cards from your hand because you have a lot of insta playables in this deck, um, but once in a blue moon, maybe you can get a second Palkia GX attack off and it's back breaking. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this Misty Lorelei is slightly worse than the Lady overall, but it has some big high roll payoff. Uh, outside of that, I've already mentioned other gusting options. You could just play great catches if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, that's overall what we're looking at. So let's go ahead and get some games in with Frostbox and see how it goes. I don't think this deck is tier one. I'm just going to go ahead and say that right now. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Um, but, uh, it's certainly a good deck to have for the future. When we get that bucket, this deck gets so much faster and so much more aggressive that maybe committing to some of these cards early and getting to know the deck isn't a bad idea because you'll, you'll, uh, have a good feel for the deck when it starts getting way, way better. All right. We have an awkward option already. Uh, I think I'm going to start Snom here, but it might mean I have to find another Snom. Depends if we're up against an aggressive deck or not. Uh, but we have some decent cards here. Like Energy Attachment and Quick Ball to the right of target and having a Com for a Frost Moth is not a bad uh, turn one at all. Alright, looks like we're up against ADP Zaysh. So we're going to go ahead and find a another Snom here. Uh, Wellord isn't bad at all. I think I just get rid of the Dene here. Keep the Com open for Frost Moth turn two. Um, so I think I just want to go ahead and take a second Snom. Uh, I guess I don't need second Snom because we're not going to get pressured turn one. Maybe I should just try and get something like a Jirachi down for more consistency. Uh, something to pivot into. And then what I need to do is Bench Jirachi, attack, uh, sorry, Bench Keldeo, attach to Keldeo, have Com for Moth next turn, then we have Professor's Research for a dig. Yeah, that seems fine. I don't really want to um, Jet Geyser here. I want to get the manual attachment in. So we'll just, just do this. This is fine. This is fine. Also some debate to attaching to the active Snom, but we can always do that on the other side of the research, right? So, um, early Palkia is pretty good against uh, ADP Zacian. Well, not necessarily super early. You can let them get their GX attack off and then do it immediately after. 
that could be really huge, depending on how much value they get from Intrepid Sword and how much value they get from sources and stuff. If they commit a couple early, the Palkia can be crazy, crazy good. And if we high roll our Keldeo, we can be pressurizing pretty quickly, to be fair. Um, the fact that he's got a Guru active might be really good for us, because we can take the easy one prize straight away, and then we just have to get through one Zacian and one ADP. So this Oranguru style for him might be really, really good for us, if we can capitalize on it. We're just going to see the Primate Wisdom, pre-supporter. Maybe looking for some targets for Guzhala. There's the ADP. He's actually Sinlining rather than Guzhalaring. It's pretty interesting. See a quick ball now, getting rid of a labs. Pretty happy to see that labs in the bin. It means we have two more outs now with our switch card from the research next turn. Okay, so they have the Aurora already. Thrown away a escape board. See that switch? Okay, so they're not going to give us that free monkey hit, but they all are going to put down a Dedene. Seeing a Malolana in the bin is pretty good for us. Because um, sometimes we are just hitting into stuff. Not necessarily taking knockouts. We're going to keep quick ball in here. Maybe go ahead and grab Absol. So that shuts down our skateboard route. And I'm just going to see the sword. Maybe get one energy down. Alright, we can calm for Moth. All three switcher in the deck. Let's get a fresh seven. We could always get a change if we uh, don't hit switch, but we do hit switch, which is pretty nice. Uh, only one energy to ice dance, so we probably will st still go for the Dedene here. Uh, now we have the decision, well, Lord Early, yes or no. Uh, I could always Oranguru it back in. Alternatively, I could Oranguru back in the Prof Research. Yeah, I think I wanna Quick wall away Snom here. Oranguru back to the research. Let's do that first. Uh, actually, I should quick wall first because I don't want to draw the Dedene exactly. <laughs> High chance of hitting a water as well, I guess. That's a Keldeo V, which is a bit of a pain, really. Ice dancing once is fine, because you know I can just try and two shot this guy. We do hit water at the very least. And we can go for a secret sword for 140. Threatening the instant knockout on him when he GXs here. Putting the Dedene does come with some downsides because now all he needs to do is knock out the Keldeo and then the Dedene. All right, he's actually going to catch her up the whale to try and slow us down. By the looks of things. Very glad that we have the monkey here to make this research less painful. We can con the Volk back into the deck, take out a Jirachi that we can just bin off, and now I can 
Primate Wisdom a retrieval, so I'm only getting rid of one next turn, and then we're digging for Switch again. They're going to go ahead and attach to ADP. Looks like it's just going to be the GX attack. The standard plays. No surprises here. Oh, they actually put Shrine down. Shrine is pretty scary if I don't deal with that quickly enough. Is that a Skype call? I need to go quite quickly. <laughs> I forgot that I had a call to get on earlier. Okay. Looks like I'll just play two games. I'll play this game and one more game. I completely forgot I had that call. Okay, right. I can calm. Protect this guy. Grab the Jirachi. We already had the plan set. In Let's put it into motion. Let's go ahead and do this. Do I want to pull a water energy out? No, because I want to draw more waters, right? So I'll Wisdom 1 back in with a higher chance of getting water out the deck. Marnie isn't fantastic, although his hand size is pretty big. I just need to have a bigger dig towards my own switches. We can get a free dance in. We can put on to Keldeo, and then we can just research. Okay, we do hit some switches, which is nice. Keldeo coming in. We have our other switch as well. So I don't really need to uh, commit waters anywhere else. So we can just take our three prize knockout. Force them to start finding some salsas. He can quite easily knock us out here for three prizes. Put us on a one turn clock. So next turn, the priority is probably go for like Stellar Wish for um, Marnie. We obviously recovered that research to the top of the deck with the Wisdom. So we can go for at least a Super Splash play into him. We'll see how that goes. Alright, there's an Aurora. Tossing away a Metal Energy, never a bad idea. He's got a couple in there now. Gonna see Quick Ball. Probably just gonna grab another Zation here, right? Unless he wants to Dead A Change again. Oh, I'm actually gonna get the Marsha though. This magic art well is threatening threatening game against him, so I guess he's getting the Marsha to give us one less uh, one less guaranteed energy. We have only played one retrieval, it's not out of the out of the realms. Unfortunately we don't have another Dedene to push. We had to get rid of it turn one. Or we chose to get rid of it turn one. Oh, Wellord's not threatening game, is it? Because the Orangaroo's still got the 20 hit points. I'm being crazy. Alright, still a wish fail. What are we going to see from them now? A stamp? Okay, that's pretty painful. We had our last switch in hand, which was really busted, but that's gone. Is his hand just bad? Does he have to Intrepid Sword here? Oh, okay, he's switching and hoping. Yeah, yeah. But he's already manually attached. Oh, busted. Okay, so we had more E switches. That's pretty lucky. Well, I don't know. I don't know how many energy switch he plays, right? But they got away with it. Nice reset stamp as well. So 
so they can take their three prize cards. Ooh, energy retrieval is a very good draw. Now, I'm looking at Palkia GX and I'm thinking, you could be busted. But so could Keldeo GX. Keldeo GX just means I need to find one energy. Probably two energy though, because I might have to pay retreat this Jirachi with the skateboard, you know what I mean? So, realistically, the Keldeo might be the thing to push for here. How many uh, sources has he used? He's used two sources, so it's still in his range to kill us. Um, that's the problem here. So do I try and play... So the, the Keldeo is definitely better than the Palkia, but are either of the plays better than just going for like a Warlord play and forcing him to have Gust, as well as switching cards? How many switch cards has he played? Board to switch, so he still probably has a decent number of switch cards. I think we go Keldeo then. Okay. Alright, let's do this. Let's dance. No hand disruption is a bit yikes. Am I meant to still wish and try and high roll Amani? No, that's just so high roll. It's too much. It's too much high roll. We're in need of too much here. The absolute. That's a lot of water energies. <laughs> okay, let's use our giant brain real quick. Okay, we hit switch. Well done. Big brain. Well, we would have had enough for the Werelord hit. I still can go for a Super Splash now if I want to. Let's see what Stellarwish brings. Stellarwish brings board, which is really nice. So I can board and attach retreat. I think it's got to be Keldeo attack, right? I still have both options. Hmm... Then all he has to do is dig for... He has played three research. That's the only thing that I'm thinking is nice. Three research already gone. I feel like I just want to do the GX attack. It's like, it's putting him on a shorter clock to win, you know? That's the plan. Let's make him find everything. Make him find double sorcerer, switch card, attachment. Make him have it. Oh, he's got it. <laughs> you can just tell, he's already, he's chilling. I mean, his deck is pretty thin. That's, that's the joy of Zacian ADP, right? few intrepid swords, few research, and suddenly you're at the bottom of your deck, and you're, and you're chilling. Alright, there's the saucer attach. Now it's just switch card saucer. That's all we need. Alright, he's gonna try and thin the deck for some quick balls. See what else is left for him. Looking at what they can do here. They're looking at their outs, I guess. They still must have a bunch of switch left. If their other sources prized, we're in good shape. Hooper. Wowee. That's a card that he plays in his deck by choice. almost kill us. <laughs> Does 150 to us. <laughs> For one, that's pretty efficient. Oh, great catcher. Oh, wait, could he have won with this? He could have won, right?
Oh, it's only 140. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 140. Okay, okay, he's off. He's off. Looks like Marnie is his dig. Needs to find switch switch card saucer by the looks of things off the Marnie. can't. He just intrepid swords. And we might be in good shape. You never know. There's the switch. He's just doing this for the hit points, I guess. Yep. It makes me find a lot more things. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. So we will thin a Pokemon that we don't need. The switch is going to be the hardest thing for us to find here, right? We'll get a fresh seven. Oh, it's down to catch a flip. Yikes. See if I can do anything else first before I flip the mighty coin. I can get an energy, I guess. Oh no, I can't because we draw our energy. Well, it's down to this. <laughs> if this was a great catcher, we would have won the game. <laughs> Just remember that while I flip this coin. Oh, we're the best. Busted. Nice, nice. Alright, I actually have to go. I didn't realize, I forgot that I had a call, so I guess I'm just doing one game with this deck. But we beat Adipization, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, sorry I can't get more gameplay in today, guys. Um, I'll try and play this on stream to make it up for you. Alright, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what you think about the list and all that good stuff. Alright, bye.